There is less than a week to go until the 9th anniversary on JP Dokkan begins. And we have so much information already, even before it has begun, thanks to the 9th anniversary fan meeting live stream. First of all, they did reveal part 1's headliner unit, which is Broly and Gogeta. Broly being a Dokkan Fest exclusive and Gogeta being a carnival unit, which we did react to their reveal. Oh, shit! Gogeta, Super Saiyan, and Bro Oh my god! Oh man, use the Gogeta! Holy shit, dude! They are doing the Dokkan Fest exclusive X Carnival way for this anniversary. And so part two will do the exact same thing, where one unit will be a Carnival unit and the other will be a Dokkan Fest exclusive. Fun fact, Broly is going to be the first extreme anniversary unit since the first anniversary, which is very monumental. Took eight years into the making in order to do this. So this is actually going to be a very crazy thing. Now, because they did announce who was going to be the Dokkan Fest exclusive and the carnival unit, uh, we do get a pretty high accurate depiction of the banners for each of them, since anniversary banners are pretty pattern based. So here is Gogeta's predicted banner. There might be some changes. Dokkan always keeps us on our toes, but this is what you should be expecting. Uh, so we have Gogeta as the headliner unit, and then we have other carnival units. Of course, it's a carnival banner. So we have LR Trunks, Kai Goku, and the Revival Goku. And there will also be some gold coin LRs. In this case, Super Buu and the Spirit Bomb Goku. Um, usually when they do this, it is one of the newer LRs that released previously. So these are two of the newer LRs. Now for part two, you can expect the vice versa. Um, that's just how they do it. So whatever the headlining unit for part two is, whether it's Beast Gohan, Cell Max, or whatever, we should see Future Gohan in the banner, then the Int Gohan. Uh, Metal Cooler, and then there should be Bulma in here, and I don't remember the other Gold Coin LRs that released. So that should be what it is. They might switch around some of the years, like maybe the Gogeta might have Gohan instead of Goku, or the Revival Goku could be Gold Cooler, or even Future Trucks could be Future Gohan, which would make the banner even stronger. <laughs> but for the most part, you, we should see these Carnival units returning. And then for the Brawly banner, We'll have Brawly as the headliner unit. There is going to be a side unit, which we don't know yet. Because the theme of the anniversary is Dragon Ball Super, it could be anybody. But if it's related to the Brawly movie, I think a good bet would be Chi-Lai and Limo as a joint forces unit. I think just because they haven't been done and um, they relate to Brawly quite well. I will see Merge the Master in here. The anniversary units from previous to the fifth anniversary. Boo Tanks, as well as Gogeta Tiwa, as well as Broly Tiwa. Now, again, this is not truly accurate. Like, we could see the vice versa. We could see Vegeta here, or Super Saiyan 4, Goku and Vegeta here, or the GT duo here, or even Vegeta Blue here. But with that said, this is what you should expect. At least you know what the possibilities are going to be. And, and so, to be expected, when the second part does come out with their Dokkan Fest exclusive lineup, We'll see whoever's the headliner, a new side unit. We'll see Vegito Blue, Vegeta, Super Saiyan 4, you know what I mean, the opposite. And then the two TURs here will probably be somewhat relevant to what the headliner unit is, whether it's Cell Max or Beast Gohan or whatever. If it is from the superhero movie, Cell Max, Beast Gohan, I uh, will just assume it's going to be Gamma 1 and 2. Now with that, there was a poll with over 200 votes. And it actually looks like that people want to pull on Gogeta more. You let me know what you guys are going to be summoning for. I don't know if it's because it's Gogeta or if it's the value of the banner. Since it's less featured on the Carnival banner, the Carnival banner is pretty solid. Like Trunks is still a very good unit. Of course, if Gogeta's number one, then awesome <laughs> i mean people will pull on him more while the while the dark infest exclusive probably might not be the first on everybody's list and there's a lot more featured units in here which makes it harder to put even pull for broly but yeah you let me know what you guys are going to be trying to pull first remember all of these banners will have three for ones which is awesome and tickets as well in order to potentially pull them for free and some very interesting information is that they did release in the actual fan meeting, not on the live stream, Gogeta's animation, or at least a preview of it. And one of the attenders did say it was original and in excellent quality. So we should have our hopes up 
to see something really awesome on the 28th of January when they do release the animations to the public. And then finally, some statements were made, which I didn't cover, which was there is going to be plans for an even above Extreme Z Awakening and an EZA2, some might say. It's only planned. They haven't even given us a date or anything, but it is near future. So maybe 10th anniversary, probably soonest. I hope that it's not going to be a new stage with 30 stages or even an EZA area-like thing where you have to gather medals, honestly. I've always said this, and I don't know if it's really a great idea, but some sort of friendship kind of meter. I know that sounds kind of like gacha gamey, too gacha gamey for Dokkan <laughs> in a way. But like if you get max link leveled or something, then you can just upgrade the passive or something or just like another slot on the skill orbs where it will change a specific where it will upgrade um, a certain passive maybe you have to just do one stage or a specific boss or mission with that character and then you just equip the skill orb that's really i don't want it to be too complicated something very simple would be the best case scenario of course getting dragon stones for doing it would be an added bonus whether it's like 30 Somehow, if they can give you 30 Dragon Stones or even just 10, then that would be great. Next up point is PvP content is not planned to be implemented. Thank God. I don't know how many of you guys wanted PvP content on Dokkan, but I definitely did not. Terrible idea. I don't even know where it would even begin, how it would even play. Just HP and attacks that are so different that it just it would be too weird. It would be definitely too weird. Um, just how the stats work out. I'm surprised that they didn't say anything about co-op or raid bosses. Maybe they will plan to do that, but not so soon that they want to talk about it right now. But they haven't, you know, discounted it, which is good. And then they had a survey in there, which had, which had an option where you could use pre-awakening illustrations, which is kind of cool. Sometimes the pre-awakening illustrations are pretty cool. I don't know what other options were on the survey, but that is all we got so far. So, yeah, the biggest thing here, obviously, is the above Extreme Z Awakening. It will be very interesting. They will EZA2, I guess we'll call it for now, um, the oldest units in the game. Which I assume they'll start off with the STR Broly as one of the first Dokkan Fest exclusives. Or they might go even older and start, you know, EZA2, some of the um, unfeatured SSRs that we have to summon as they do need it the most or maybe even they start off with the first anniversary just to make it as hype as possible i'm not too sure but this actually does make it quite interesting because this when this does happen technically i have in my hands if the easy a2s make them as good as 80 percent of the value of like the current door confess exclusives of that point in time very strong units in my character box being free to play because remember you can obtain these guys through redstones however i actually don't think you can actually obtain these older ones for much longer because they're moving on to the 120 percent leaders to prevent that to happen but technically if you're old enough player these are all free in a way because you were able to get them with redstones even though they're barely featured which is annoying because i only got this brawly at one at 55 percent but if this does happen like i might have some strong i might have some of the strongest cards in the game just based off being free to play which is very crazy to think about um however i don't really use redstone units to complete hard content uh the only time i really use them is for ultimate clash just for their leader skills but even then they will help out tremendously when it does happen because if they i mean if they i hope i guess the easy a2s will make them of value to compete with the current content of that time whether it's post 10th anniversary or whatever uh so it'll be very interesting to see what they do with them how big of an upgrade they do and how much it changes things when i use them but i'm glad they are doing this even if they make it tedious to do it as i think any premium card should be at least somewhat usable as older players may have spent hundreds of dollars trying to get these guys you know so it makes me feel better that your value of money is actually still being of value. <laughs> Thank you for watching today's video. If you did enjoy, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. And if you want early access to these YouTube videos as soon as I drop them and not having to wait, you can click the first link in my description to become a member or click on the join button. You can get videos as soon as I upload them as well as getting some other cool perks 
on this YouTube channel. But with that said, I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Until the next one, peace.